Here we're going to look at a nice inequality that was found on the 2003 edition of the Centro American Math Olympiad. So we want to take two natural numbers, A and B, and they satisfy the rule that A is bigger than 1, so it's bigger than or equal to 2, and B is bigger than 2, so that means it's bigger than or equal to 3. And we want to prove that A to the B plus 1 is bigger than or equal to B times the quantity A plus one. And then as is standard with a lot of these inequality questions, we wanna determine when there is equality. And I'm gonna present what is a bit of an edited solution to this, just to make it kind of a little slicker than it would be from an exploratory standpoint. So I like to do this with some videos. So some videos we explore into a solution, and in other videos, this is kind of like a performance of the solution. Okay, so let's maybe start with the left-hand side and see what we can do with that. So we'll start with this a to the b plus 1, and notice that we can write that as a to the b minus 1 plus 2. Well, so clearly 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, so I mean we've really done some difficult arithmetic already. But next up, we can take this a to the b minus 1 and factor it a bit. So let's do that. So we can take this and write it as a minus 1 times 1 plus a plus a squared plus all the way up to a to the b minus 1. And then we're taking this and adding 2 to it. So just to reiterate, we've just factored this guy right here. So next, we can see that this is equal to a minus 1 times b times the arithmetic mean of the numbers 1, a, all the way up to a to the b minus 1 plus 2. So notice that the arithmetic mean of these numbers is equal to the sum of these numbers divided by b. But if we divide by b and multiply by b, then we haven't changed anything here. Next up, we want to use the arithmetic geometric mean inequality to say that this is bigger than or equal to, now I'll bring this b out front, and then we'll have a minus 1 times the geometric mean of these numbers 1, a all the way up to a to the b minus 1. And then we'll have plus 2 here. So just to reiterate, from this step to this step, we use the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So we know that the arithmetic mean is always bigger than or equal to the geometric mean. OK, nice. But now that's going to be equal to b times a minus 1 times the bth root of 1 times a times a squared all the way up to a to the b minus 1 and then we have plus 2 here. But now that's going to be equal to b times a minus 1 and then we can do a quick calculation here. Notice that by exponent rules, this is going to be equal to a to the 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to b minus 1. Next, we can use the fact that that's just a triangular number in the exponent here. And in fact, this exponent can be written as b times b minus 1 over 2. So that means all of this is equal to a to the b times b minus 1 over 2. But since we're taking the b th root, that b is going to cancel, leaving us with a to the b minus 1 over 2, and then we have this plus 2 on the outside. Again, that's because we've got a triangular number in the exponent there. Okay, so now let's take this inequality, which starts here, has a greater than or equal to, and ends here, and then bring that up and we'll do some more calculus. On the last board, we constructed the following inequality. So we have a to the b plus 1 is bigger than or equal to b times a minus 1 times a to the b minus 1 over 2 plus 2. Next up, from our assumption, we know that b is bigger than 2, which means that b is bigger than or equal to 3. But that tells us that b minus 1 over 2 is bigger than or equal to 1. So if b minus 1 over 2 is bigger than or equal to 1, 
then that means that we can replace this exponent with just the number one if we put the inequality in the correct order. And we'll do that. So this is gonna be bigger than or equal to B times A minus one times A and then plus two. But now I can turn this into a strict inequality if I drop the two and then simultaneously I'll multiply this A through. So this is strictly bigger than B times A squared minus A. So it looks like we're kind of building something that looks like this right hand side of the inequality. But notice here we have this linear object in A, it's A plus one. And over here we have this quadratic object in A. So what we need to look at is when is this quadratic object in A bigger than or equal to this linear object in A? In other words, we want to answer the question, when is A squared minus A bigger than or equal to A plus one? And the values that, of A that satisfy that will put the inequality in the correct direction for us to assert this goal inequality. Okay, well notice that this inequality is true if and only if we have a squared minus 2a minus 1 is bigger than or equal to 0. But now thinking about this like an upward facing parabola, so I'll draw it like this we'll see that that will have two roots. One will be negative and one will be positive. And this positive root using the quadratic formula will be situated at one plus the square root of two. So that means all natural numbers of A that are bigger than this one over the square root of two will satisfy this inequality. And thus we can replace A squared minus A with A plus one. But notice that one plus the square root of two is between two and three. So that means that if A is bigger than or equal to three, then our goal inequality right here is satisfied. In other words, our sub goal inequality. So that means that here we can replace this with bigger than or equal to B times A plus one if A is bigger than or equal to three. And notice that works for all values of B. So now all that's left to check is the case when A equals two because that's also allowed here. Okay, and I wanna assert again that this strict inequality here means that there are no possibilities for equality if A is bigger than or equal to three. So that leaves the only possibility of equality to happen when A is equal to two. Okay, so let's erase this and then we'll summarize and finish it off. So on the last board, we determined that if A and B are bigger than or equal to three, then our goal inequality is satisfied. And I'm gonna go ahead and erase this greater than or equal to and just make it a greater than because we showed that we could not have equality in any of those cases. And all that's left to check is the case when A is equal to two. So notice the case that A is equal to two will change this inequality to a very special case and that'll be two to the B plus one is bigger than or equal to three times B. So this is an exponential object on the left-hand side and a linear object on the right-hand side. So clearly this one is gonna grow faster, but we've gotta determine that a little bit more carefully. So let's maybe go ahead and consider the following function. I'll call it f of x, and it'll be two to the x minus three x plus one. And what we want to show is that f of x is bigger than or equal to zero for all x bigger than or equal to three. So notice that if we plug in b equals three, that's the smallest value of three, we actually get equality here. So let's maybe point that out. Equality when b is equal to three. But then if we show this inequality for x bigger than or equal to three, then we've proven that this inequality is true for all of the other values of b. Okay, and we're gonna do this bit with calculus. So I'm gonna first notice that f of three is equal to zero. 
And then everywhere, everywhere to the right of three, f is an increasing function, means that it, meaning that it's always increasing above zero, satisfying this inequality. Okay, so let's do that. We'll take f prime of x. Notice that that's gonna be the natural log of two times two to the x minus three. Here we're just using the standard rule of the derivative of an exponential function like that. But now in order to get a handle on the size of this, I'm gonna do a little bit of a trick. I'm gonna take this natural log of two and I'm gonna write it as the natural log of the square root of four. So obviously the square root of four is two, so we're good to go there. Then we can use a natural log rule, thinking about this as four to the half to bring the half out front. So that's gonna give us one half natural log of four times two to the x minus three. Next, we'll use the fact that the number four is bigger than the number e, the natural base for this natural log, and the fact that the natural log function is increasing to say that this is strictly bigger than one half times the natural log of e times two to the x minus three. But now natural log of e is equal to one, so that leaves us with two to the x minus one minus three. So just looking at this, we see that this is going to be clearly bigger than zero if x is bigger than or equal to three. So let's see what we've got going on here. We've got f of three is equal to zero. You can easily check that f of four will be positive. And then furthermore, f prime of x is bigger than zero as long as x is bigger than or equal to three, which means the function is increasing after the point when x is equal to three, which means it can never get back to zero, let alone become negative, meaning that it's always positive after that, meaning this inequality is satisfied, and thus this inequality is satisfied. And that's a good place to stop.